Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amber and I'm the owner and creator behind Being a Bliss. I make all handmade uh, organic baby clothing. I do accessories and blankets and birthday shirts as well. But if you are new here, please consider subscribing. I do work with me videos and I do tutorials and sew alongs as well. Um, but today we're just going to be working on a few orders. I have some blankets, rompers, and some baby skirts to get out this week. It's already Thursday, so I wanted to complete as many orders as I can before the weekend hits. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to walk you through how I get my work orders done on a daily basis. I hope that you guys enjoy, and if you follow through to the end, I really appreciate it. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you soon. We are dreamers of the You guys, I'm watching Sewing Machines Plus with Carly Bell right now. I've learned a lot from her from the very beginning. So if you keep seeing me look back, that's what I'm doing. I'm looking back at the TV. When we can't read the sky We just sail with the wind that we've got And when we're drowning in doubt Just keep on believing We are dreamers of the just organizing my fabric and look at how pretty it looks when it's all nice and organized and clean. I have a bunch of new prints that I need to make samples for. Like look at this one. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. It's got like a horse and like a teepee with cactus. Might be my favorite girl one now. I don't know. I have, let's see, I think you guys have seen all of these ones. So for the boy, I got a new dinosaur one. So cute. Same as my other dinosaur print, just in more of a neutral tone colors. It matches my brand, I think, a little bit better. Um, what else? I don't know if I have anything else up here that's brand new. I think that's it, but it just looks so organized. Um, I organize my fabric by um, when I go to Hobby Lobby or Joann's, I get spools. So those are where I keep my spools. And then when I get new fabrics in, I put them on the spools. So it just keeps me organized and a way... Yeah, I'm just staying organized. So I love it when it's all nice and neatly put in there. After I take them out with cutting, they get unorganized and jumbled, and I hate it when it's unorganized. So I took a moment and organized for the day. So there you go. We are dreamers of the shore When we can't read the sky We just sail with the wind that we've got Drowning in doubt, just keep on believing. 
We are dreamers of the
Okay, so this is what I use for my size 4 to 5 T skirts. This is a 1.5 inch elastic non-roll. I use a non-roll for my skirts. So I'm going to go cut this and then I'll put it back in here in one second. Okay, you guys, I wanted to show you from behind the camera so that I can see what I'm showing you as I move along. But I did want to let you know that this is the Reliable 2300 SZ Industrial Sewing Machine. This machine offers a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch. I love those two options um, as a sewist. I do offer zigzag stitch, so I wanted to be able to have that in an industrial strength machine. I know I've said this many times, but there are not very many industrial machines with this option so I went with this machine I'm so happy I did I love it so much it's made my world so much easier running a small business um, with me being the only one that sews so um, I wanted to give you a close-up of how I switch it over very quickly from straight stitch to zigzag stitch and then back to straight stitch. It takes literally half a second. It's so simple. Um, and if you are interested in this machine, they are available on sewingmachinesplus.com. I do have an affiliate link below in my description box. So if you do want to purchase this machine, please use my link. I would be greatly appreciative of it. But anyway, let's get started on how you switch it over to zigzag. So right now, when you can choose where you want your needle, so right, middle, and left. All the, I have it all the way over to the right right now. That's where I always sew my straight stitch. It's usually about like a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Um, and then you can see that this lever right here is straight up and down. So that is on a straight stitch. Right now, I'm about to move it over to zigzag so that I can sew a waistband on. Um, so let me just show you how you do that. So you literally take the lever, push it all the way over to the left. Now mind you, this is how I do it. There could be different ways and different um, zigzag links and whatnot, but this is the setting that I have chosen for all of my clothing that has worked the best for me. Um, I haven't messed with other settings just because I like the way this look is, so this is how I do it. So anyway, you push it all the way over to the left, you take this knob and tighten it. Let go and you're set. That's all you do. And then it will sew out a very nice professional zigzag stitch. And then when you're ready to move back to straight stitch, you literally turn this knob to the left and that clicks off and you're ready to go back to straight stitch. So simple, half a second, you can move it back and forth multiple times throughout your sewing day and it is just the most simple feature I've ever encountered on a sewing machine. So I hope that this helps you guys if you are struggling with zigzag stitch on this machine. So anyway, I'm going to get back to work and I hope you enjoyed that short break. So now I can just move my waistband around to make it nice and fluffy all the way around the whole thing. And then I just kind of stretch it, move it around. And there is my skirt. So cute. I love it. You can also see where the side seams are, so if you want to adjust those, you can adjust those. Um, I usually just take my finger where the side seam is and stretch it straight out, and then that allows me to know exactly where the sides are, 
I make sure my tags in the back are centered and that's perfectly centered and good. I've already ironed it because I pre-iron, you saw me pre-iron it in the beginning, so it does not need to be pressed again. I just go ahead on the, at this uh, step and just go ahead and fold the skirt. And then this is how I package it in the packaging. Just make sure it's nice and neat. And that's how I package it right there. So this order is now complete. And now I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch my rompers. Top stitching, if you're wondering, if you have never heard of top stitching before, it's just a terminology that we use, and it's just basically top stitching on the front of the um, clothing that you make, the outfit. Just makes it look a little bit more pressed and professional, and um, it just basically seals the item to me. Um, I just started doing this, and I absolutely love the outcome of it. I, again, it just makes it look a little bit more professional and just gives it like that finishing touch, in my opinion. And I've always top stitched everything, including my blankets. I just never did the rompers because I didn't think they needed it. But then I did it one time, and that was probably a couple months ago. And now I just like, I love the look of it now. And it's one of those like aha moments where you're like, why did I not ever do that before? But I do it now, so that's all that matters. Little things that you do to improve your business, things that you think of that you know you want to change, or how can I make or improve my business just in the slightest way, and just little things like that are what helps it, I think. So you can always, there's always, always, always room for improvement. No matter how long you've been doing it, or how much you've done it, um, always, always room for improvement. And right here, this is when I tack down my liner to my body pieces. That's what I'm doing here. Super easy step. Um, again, in the beginning when I started making these, I didn't do this step and then I realized quite quickly when I um, made these for my son that something needed to happen to the liner to have it tucked down to the body. And then I figured out how to do this and I don't know if this is the correct way to do it. This is just the way I do it and it works so now I just do it. Rompers are very easy to make. They're just time consuming because there are a lot of different parts to them and a lot of different steps. And the outcome is amazing. But again, it's just time consuming. But they are very, very popular. And kids of all ages can wear them. Not just babies, not just toddlers, everyone. They're so cute. And you can charge more for these because they are such a time consuming product in your shop. Um, they take a lot of product, they take a lot of time and patience. And you can charge more for these. So these are a staple item in my shop and they are a money maker because they are more expensive and you can charge more the bigger sizes because it is a lot a lot of product that you're using lots of material lots of fabric so remember always charge more for different sizes i charge newborn up to i think three to six months is the same and then six to nine nine to twelve are the same amount 
and then I think 12 to 18, or maybe 6 to 9 to 12 to 18 are the same. And then 18 to 24 and up are even more. So it just keeps jumping as they get older because it's more, each size you jump up more and more material that you have to use. And this is all organic fabric, so it's quite pricey, and you just have to um, calculate it with that. Right here is where my seams meet, so I just push it down and watch how effortlessly, effortlessly I can't talk, this needle goes over that entire seam right there. It just glides right over it. This is another reason why I wanted an industrial machine because my other machine would get stuck on all my seams when I would top stitch and made it hard for me to do any kind of top stitching. Okay guys, so today I am kind of rushed for time, so I wanted to at least package these couple orders that I finished um, on this video really quickly before I start my next blanket because I have to leave in a certain amount of time, so I wanted to at least show you how I package my skirts and my rompers. I have many, many videos on how I do this, but um, for those of you that are watching on this video right now, I wanted to be able to show you guys how I do this. So. Here I'm going to show you how I package, what I put in my packaging, and how I send it off. So keep watching and if you like this kind of content, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I hope that you enjoyed this video. This okay, time. so first things first, um, I usually print off all of my orders in the morning that I know need to go out. So here are their um, slips with their shipping slips. So I'm going to put those underneath here so I know that each one of those goes with each item. I usually put all of my same items together, so I don't know why I put this right here. So let's scoot this over. We're going to do both of these at the same time. So I usually, what I do, all of my rompers, I put this little care instructions tag on. So it has my logo on the front, and then on the back it has care instructions. It says, please take good care of me. I am handmade in the USA for your trendy little one. And then underneath it says, please wash on a gentle cycle and dry me naturally. Just so that they know exactly how to take care of the item. It is handmade. They want to hand, wa not hand wash it, but they don't want to, um, technically you don't want to dry it. I dry mine and they're fine, but to get a longevity out of the outfit, you want to hand, or <laughs> dry naturally. I can't talk. Sorry guys. So I always put one of these on every single romper. And I tie them on with this. With all of my other items, like my skirt, I'll show you how I do it when I get to that one. So that's how I do those. And then I have all of my clear poly mailers, um, or clear plastic bags, whatever you want to call them, over here. I put each one in their own bag so that they're protected. And I grab another care instructions card. It has all of my website info on one side. On the other side, it has um, the five stars, and I'd love a review, and some other care instructions saying, like, always wash inside out, machine wash cold with mild detergent, and for best results, dry naturally. Just some simple, easy um, care instructions. I put them in there twice just so that they know. I have reached out to them and tried to let them know how to care for their item. If anything happens, it's not really on me. So, just something that I do for my business. You don't have to do that. It's just what I've always done and how I how I like to do it. So there's that one. 
Also, this card has, you know, the five stars. So um, it's just a reminder to please give me a review because I love uh, the feedback. Obviously, we all do with our small businesses. It's just a good way of bringing customers back and gaining new customers. So that is the start of how I do my rompers. Now my skirt, what I do is I still, I grab a bigger bag. Let's see what size is that. Actually, it'll fit in this one. I'm pretty sure it'll fit in this one. We'll make it fit. So what I do is I just put my skirts in there very nicely. And then I do the same thing. I put that card in the back side. And because I, can't, I don't have a strap to hang the other care instructions card, I put this in the back and then I just lay one in here on the front because it's pretty, um, it's just yet again just another way to show them that I'm trying to help them care for their item. So that's how I do my skirts. Now, each one of these items is going to get just a bubble mailer. So just one of these um, bubble mailers that I do um, for these items. I do have boxes underneath here that I use for other items. If they order outfits or anything over two items, I usually put into a box. Um, anything under that, I just use one of these. Bummies, I use um, these right here. They fit perfectly in there and it matches just pretty much my um, color scheme for my business. So I will show you other packaging things as I go um, or as I make new videos, but this is how these ones right here get packaged. So I always put one of my stickers on the back of every single package that I do. You want a brand. Branding is huge. So, especially if you're a small business like myself, make sure you brand yourself. You always want to brand. So, so I don't get confused. I always just put my tags right on. And then I lay it on top like that. That way I know that goes with that. And I'm always double checking the name as I go too. A handwritten note. Not many people do this, but I think it's very important for this to be done because one, it lets your customer know that you've appreciated your their order and just a way to thank them and say, I hope that you love your order. Most of the time I just say, thank you so much, whatever their name is. And then I say, I hope that you love your um, organic bison romp baby romper or you can I always make up different things to put on there I don't always put the same thing it's just literally whatever comes to my mind at that moment that I'm writing the thank you letter it's just a way to thank them and say I appreciate you keep it simple less is more so again this one's name is Jane so I'm just gonna put thank you Jane I hope that you love this beautiful mermaid baby romper that's all I'm gonna put Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for this one, except this one is gonna be a little bit different because this is actually a gift. So I'm just gonna put, I hope you love your bison baby romper. That's it. Okay, now this one is going, this one is not a gift, so I'm just gonna write her a note saying, thank you, Margaret, I hope you love your little girl's rainbow skirt or something like that. Just literally whatever comes to my head is what I write. Okay, so I ended up putting thank you, Margaret. 
I hope you love this sweet rainbow baby skirt. So again, whatever you think of, there's no wrong answer on how to write a thank you note. So just something to add to your order. Okay, and then after that, I literally just pull out each item. And because this one is a gift, I put all of my empty ones down here when I'm done. I do not include this. This was just for myself as um, I cut each item out. I just like to refer to that. All of these handmade with love stickers that I have in here, I only use them on my gift items. So I put it underneath here just to add a little touch. If you know me and my packaging, I just like to give that extra touch each time. So I just fold that up, make sure this is going to the right person. I put my letter behind here because I don't want to cover that up. And I do include one of my cards. So I'm actually going to turn it this way so that you can see a gift for you from whoever it's from. And then I'm going to put my card in here so they know. And then I'm just going to double check. This is to Christine. Okay. And then put it in there, and that's ready to go. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this one. This is, again, not a gift. It's just a skirt for someone who ordered it. So I already stamped it with my thank you stamp. I'm just folding it. Thank you note on top. Business card on top. Clip them together, and in the package it goes. And that's how I do my packaging for those items. Okay guys, that is all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. For those of you who stayed and stuck through to the end, I really appreciate your guys' time that you put in to watch my video. Um, I finished up some of these orders today. They aren't due until the 2nd, but I'm trying to keep up on my orders as best as I can. Um, just so that I want to bring out some new product, new content for you guys, some new prints, some new samples, some birthday shirts, items. I have new items coming. I'm super, super excited about. But that means I have to be caught up completely with orders so that I can make new products for you guys. So, um, super exciting stuff coming, but that does take a lot of time and effort. So I like to make sure it is good to go before I actually send them out. So anyway, if you are not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. And for those of you who do not know, I am an affiliate for SMP, which is SewingMachinesPlus.com. And if you have seen any of the machines that I've used in this video today that you're interested in, there should be links below um, for you to use to go to their website and purchase those machines or even just look at them and try to get a feel for them. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me ever. You can email me, binghambliss at yahoo.com. Um, I do have a website, binghambliss.com, and an Etsy site at binghambliss. So please, again, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, night, morning, whatever it is to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Bye for now.